the title of my talk is cholangiocarcinoma uh, and gallbladder cancer. So if we have to discuss that patient that comes up with a tumor in his liver, we have to distinguish what type of tumor is it. So we have to have our radiology fan friends with us to distinguish is this a tumor that is originating from the liver itself? Uh, is it an epitumor, a cholangiocarcinoma? Is it a benign tumor or is it a metastasis? So we first of all have to distinguish to find out is it cholangiocarcinoma? Then if we um, decide that the intrahepatic tumor is a cholangiocarcinoma, then we have several treatment options. Coming back to the diagnosis cholangiocarcinoma, it's not only in the liver, it can also be in the bile duct itself. Uh, the most common bile duct tumor is the Kletzkin tumor, which is originating from the bile duct bifurcation. Then we have the distal cholangiocarcinoma, which is located at the end of the bile duct within the pancreas, requiring a pancreatic resection. And then we have the gallbladder cancer. There are four entities that are summarized as cholangiocarcinoma. Um, as every newly diagnosed cancer, we have to discuss them in the multidisciplinary board where we decide what treatment options are available. And I mainly talk about the surgical options because I'm a surgeon. Uh, also, um, I do a lot of medical oncology as well. So therefore, in the tumor board, we have to decide how big is the tumor. Is it metastasized or is it just a localized tumor that we can treat surgically? In cholangiocarcinoma, that's different depending on the location. So intrahepatic is the treatment size dependent, the larger it is, the more extensive liver surgery the patient requires. If it's located in the bile duct as the Kletzkin tumor, um, that requires not only a bile duct resection, it requires in 99 out of 100 pa uh, patients a major liver resection as well. So there uh, the problem and the discussion is First of all, the patient comes in icteric, so with high bilirubin. Uh, do we have to train the patient? And do we have to do portal vein embolization, which is basically an interventional radiology treatment where we can extend and hypotrophy the liver that we are trying to preserve? Uh, if we have distal cholangiocarcinoma surgical-wise, we do do deno pancreatectomy, so we basically remove the pancreatic head with a reconstruction of uh, the organs that are preserved, so pancreas, bile duct, and the stomach. And if we have gallbladder cancer, the most important issue there is, is it a tumor that is diagnosed as a real big gallbladder cancer? Much more often nowadays we see patients that come with the histology report. Their gallbladder has been taken out due to gallstones and then the histology says there was a gallbladder cancer in it. And what the patients require if the tumor is extending into the wall, which is the definition of a gallbladder cancer, that the patient requires a re-resection of the adjacent liver uh, segments, which is 4B and 5, and a lymphadenectomy. Um, because what we have shown is doing re-resection in this patient is very beneficial in regards to overall outcome. So these are the four entities of cholangiocarcinoma and the four surgical treatment options in regards to um, adjuvant treatment. We have very a new data coming from ESCO from a few weeks ago where Bill Cup, uh, so the UK group, ABC group, which is studying a lot in gallbladder or cholangiocarcinomas, have uh, demonstrated in the phase three trial that giving adjuvant capecitabine, so the oral 5 of you, compared to observation was significantly beneficial in regards to overall survival, extending the patients that received the truck uh, by nearly um, one and a half years compared to the ones that did not receive the drug. So lots going on with cholangiocarcinoma. Also, it's a small entity compared to other GI cancers. Um, 
and it requires decent discussion with doctors that have seen this tumor before.